Okay, video number 13 of the Schneider Modicon TM3 expansion modules video series here. We're gonna be looking at wiring temperature sensors to a expansion module. What's really awesome about this card is that not only is it sold as being able to go and do temperature sensors, which it specifically can, but you can also use it for some analog voltage uh, inputs or current inputs as well. So let's start by just defining the unit we're going to be using. We're using the TM3 TI4. TI is talking about temperature input. 4 telling us it's got four inputs. What we do cover inside of this video could be expanded out to the larger TM3 TI8 as well, if you have one of those. Starting inside of the data sheet, we see that it can be used with the 221, 241, 251, or 262 style of modicon. And then it gives us this huge table over here. Well, it's not that huge, but it's a really good looking table that we are going to have here of the types of analog inputs we can take into it. And what we see is up at the very top over here, we can take in regular analog current, 0 to 24 to 20, or analog voltage, 0 through 10 volt, or minus 10 through positive 10 volt signals into this component over here. So if we want, we can use it as a regular analog input. However, it has been designed specifically that it can go and use all of these styles of temperature sensing. We've got a whole pile of our different thermocouples. They give us the ranges and the types on the back over here, J, K, R, S, B, T, N, E, and C, that we're going to go and have, as well as we're going to be able to go and use it with some of our RTD, resistive temperature devices, the probes that we're going to go and have, uh, NIs and PTs that we are going to be able to use as well. Those are going to be our three wire devices. These are going to be our two wire devices as we look at them. All right, let's jump across to take a little bit more of a look inside of the data sheet. They give us a little bit about the resolution that we are going to go and have off of here. This just tells us how fine of a change uh, that we're going to be able to signal into our PLC. So 16 bits means we're taking that entire range and we're breaking it across that, which means that we have got thousands and thousands of individual data points that we're able to utilize across there. The LSB value over here is going to go and tell us the smallest amount of change that I'm going to be able to go and pick up off of these here. We see that it's going to be 2.44 millivolts and 0 to 10 volt, 4.88 millivolts if it's the minus 10 to positive 10 so they're doubling it up because they're doubling the range there and then it's going to be 4.88 microamps on the 0 to 20 and 3.91 microamps on the 4 to 20. What is significant about these values is that they're not quite as good as an AI type of card analog input that's designed specifically for the analog input so although we can use this for our regular AIs it's not going to give us quite the same LSB values as we would have off of a dedicated one. So just take care with that if you're trying to use that. Other than that, for temperature, it gives us a 0 0.1 of a degree uh, Celsius change that we're able to go and measure on temperatures or thermocouples themselves. What we also see is that the conversion time and the sampling time are going to go and be much larger than what we had on our analog inputs. When we were dealing with our analog inputs, we were looking at one millisecond before on that analog input. Now it's up to 10 milliseconds. And by the time that we are sampling temperature that we are going to go and have, uh, it's going to be up to 100 milliseconds that we are going to go and have across there. So it's a slower card because it's got to go and measure. Um, it's not waiting for a signal that's already going to be present the way you would on a regular analog input where you're forcing a voltage or a current towards it. This is going to go and run a little bit of current. It's going to measure the amount of resistance. It's going to calculate that, etc. as it comes back in and then, you know, send out our signal to our PLC. So it just takes a little bit more time to do than what we would normally have. Voltage and current as well is also going to be longer. Remember on our other analog inputs, the AI dedicated cards, it was only going to be one millisecond plus another millisecond per channel plus my cycle time. Now we're up to 10 milliseconds plus 10 milliseconds. So although you can use it for voltage and current, it's going to be slower this card on voltage and current. Most cases, it's going to be more than fast enough, but in some extremely technical cases, it will not be so. Okay, looking at our data sheet over here, we see that the TI4, which is what we're looking at, uh, is broken down across three separate things that we are going to be able to go and deal with. And those are going to be when I take a look at, I can either bring in zero to 10 volts inside of here, 
or I can go and take in my temperature, or I can go and take in my temperature. Again, this is to get three wire RTDs. These are gonna be my two wire thermocouples that I'm going to go and have. Either way, what we do see across the top is that it is always going to require a external power supply and then a fusing and bringing in positive 24 volts in and then a negative as well. This is gonna go and run the electronics that are inside of there, and then we're going to go and have a ground. What is also significant is that we have got a bunch of NC blocks over here, which stand for no connection. No connection, we'll just write that in there, uh, which means that we're not using them. That's just because they're using the same body as the other ones, they're just not using those data points themselves. A little bit further down though, we do have a couple of NCB, NCB that we are going to go and have. And it's really gonna depend upon what we are connecting to. On a two wire device, we do not use the NC. So it's like they've taken these and they've broken them into columns. So over here, if you take a look, you can have a positive and a negative and not connected when you have a two wire voltage or current device. Same with when I'm looking at, break this into columns here. Uh, two wire thermocouples over here, I'm going to have my positive and my negative that I'm going to go and have and a not connect because it's two wire. But over here where I go into my three wire RTDs, we do need to go and have that reference terminal that we are going to go and have, right? We've got two of these that run the actual main data and then one of these that's gonna be a reference terminal that allows us to accurately calculate the voltage drop that's happening on that signal. So we see that over here, B and uh, B hyphen that are going to be off of there. So in this case, we're ignoring that. And you'll note that even in their drawing over here, they just reverse the order so that you can see the A's and the B's off of this one here when I'm using with the resistive temperature devices. Okay, we're gonna do uh, just thermocouples and resistive temperature devices. We have done these in a previous video, so you can refer back to that one later on. Do note as well, uh, I forgot to point this out, that we are showing our protective earth or shielding that we are going to go and have around each of our cables. Looking at the fusing that we're gonna use for this card, since we need to bring power into the card, do apply some type of fusing, put it in through a DIN rail type of fuse. I suggest either the CCs with the HCLR style, or I suggest one of these that is going to go and use the glass or ceramic types. And then over here, we have got our drawing for it. We're gonna go and just quickly parse through the power. If I see I've got the AC being brought in through a DIN rail breaker into a DC power supply, that DC power supply is gonna convert it into positive 24 volts, and we feed that 24 volts into my main PLC. So that's gonna provide power to my main PLC, as well as I'm gonna go and provide power to another fuse holder over here that is going to go and provide power for our card when we go and wire that one up. If I zoom in just a little bit off of this one here, we do see our card itself. There's many more terminals than what we've seen on previous ones. It's this taller style that they have. And so they move, you know, some of the uh, lines off to the side over here. We're connected onto a main brain that's a 251. This is the actual card that we are taking in over here. And we see we have got the plus minus uh, 24 volts. And then we have got these NCs. And then we've got the IO plus, IO minus, and NC. What we don't see off at the side of the card is going to be this A and this B thing that we're going to use for our RTD. So we'll refer back to that when we do those connections. Okay, let's start with the most important part, which is gonna be providing power to the card itself. So we're gonna go and take in 24 volts, as well as we are going to go and take in a negative. And then we're also going to go and take in a ground from our closest ground in like that. So this now provides power to this card so it can start sensing what we have for signal coming in there. Let's deal with the thermocouple first. We're gonna take that thermocouple up to this one right over here, I1, positive and negative. So my thermocouple over here is going to be a two wire device that I'm going to have. I did not put a type to it because it wouldn't really matter which type. Uh, and we are going to go and just connect our positive onto our red and our negative onto our black. So we'll do that over here, positive comes into the I1 positive, negative is going to come into the I1 negative, like that. And we will once more just zoom in so we can read those terminals off of here. Positive and negative running into those two there. Perfect. 
Okay, our RTD does have two leads that are gonna be the same color, one lead that's gonna be different color. Sometimes it's gonna be a combination of reds and blacks. I've seen reds and whites. I have seen whites and blacks. Really depends on the manufacturer, but you will see two that will have the exact same color and one that will be a slight bit different. And the slight bit different is gonna be the one that's the, our signal. So if we go back just a page, two pages over here, what we see is that the different one goes into my positive. See how the positive lines up with the one that's an A, and then these two here are gonna be B and B sensing that we are going to have. They're going to be the opposite colors. So this on here, what we would need to do is we would need to take one of these into the positive. So we look for the one that's a different color. In this case, it is going to be the white over here, and this is gonna go into my Positive. We're going to use this light blue like that over there. And then the other two are going to go into the negative and what was an NC before, but now is going to be my B sensing. So we're going to go and run this one in. And we are going to go and run this one in. And it would not matter which one runs in from where. There's zero difference because they actually make a connection together up here because we're just using it for a monitoring for voltage drop that we have off of these things. So going back. Once more over here, we see that we have got two of the same color. We'll actually go down to this one over here, two of the same color that are gonna be my Bs. And we're connected to this one that was my NC down below. And then one that was going to be different color, which is connected to my A. So this exact coloring scheme that we have over here is the same as what we have over here. And we'll zoom in on that one just to finish this up. So here's my RTD. The different goes to the plus. See, that's our different one. And the two sames go to here and it can be interchanged.